Hello and welcome to Real Taxi, the show with me, Real Taxi driver and stand-up comedian Trevor Bickles. Now on today's show we are in sunny South East London with a fantastic act. Not only is she my first female guest of the show, she is a fantastic comedian who packs a punch and sends them all a bit goofy. Now if you're wondering what I'm on about, sit back and watch the show and enjoy. I'm not going to waffle anymore, we're going to get straight into it with our first guest, the wonderful Fiona Ridgewell. We're going to give you a clap as well. Let's give you a clap. Oh, thanks, Trevor. Welcome to the welcome to the cab. How you been? I've been good, thank you. Uh, considering it's a global pandemic, uh, I thrive. I thrive in those, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> I feel bad I'm... saying it, but uh, do you know what? Go on. Um, previously, I used to be really busy, and everyone said, "Oh, I think you keep yourself busy, and you're avoiding sort of like." A breakdown, yeah. And uh, we went into a pandemic, didn't have anything to do. It turns out my mental health is all right. It's spot I don't on. Brag. <laughs> You're not meant to brag about that, but so I've coped quite well. So you've survived mentally the global pandemic. Yeah, but we've still got a bit to go though, haven't we? So there's oh. always a risk. Have you? Well, it was just the first week since lockdown. It's like sort of slightly relaxed, right? Have you hit the barbers or the sort of hairdressers or the pub or anything like that? I'm actually quite offended that you've had to ask if you could see the brightness of my hair. Oh, your hair looks wonderful. <laughs> um, um, I tell you, we'll, we'll put a cut in there. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm noticing by your hair, Fiona, that it looks amazing. No, and no, you keep that. You keep the reality in, I'm going to keep the reality in, I tell you. <laughs> keep the reality in. Yeah, I, it's gone a bit red. Um, I sort of asked for Auburn. She went more of a pink. But, um, <laughs> I'm hoping lockdown lasts a bit longer so it can fade. <laughs> so, so you can fade back into a natural, then when you go out, it looks all right, exactly, basically. Exactly, yeah. Do you know what, right? I, I was like you. I, also, I went to the barbers, when was it? Uh, the other day. And you know the amount they take off? Yeah, right? yeah. I didn't realise how much hair I had. It was like it was like, like a shaggy dog, just with the hair being coming off. It was but you look dig- good. You look great now. She's chatting shit. <laughs> chatting proper shit. She's a, she's she's talking rubbish, mate. I'm telling you, right? So, right, you you you're a stand-up comedian like myself. Yeah. Um, how long have you been going on the circuit? Because obviously, I've known you ever since I've started. Like, did we start around the same time? That makes it sound like I was there before and I'll this, be there after. No, no, this is what I mean, like, like I'll be honest with you. Like, I've known you. Obviously, I've been doing it like five years, and, I've, and obviously, I've known you for that whole length of time. Yeah. Like, I'd say about maybe six years. Okay. I'm probably not going to count this last year. No, I don't think anyone is, are they? No, because, like, stand-up sort of relies on experience and I wasn't really getting to gig. Mm. So it's probably, it must be about six, six and a half years. Did you do any Zoom gigs? Yeah, I did. I did one last night. Oh, did you? Yeah. Um, they, 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 they've got the hang of them now. They're quite good. Yeah. Um, when I first did them, it was sort of like talking into the abyss. It, it, do you know what, it felt like a normal night for me with no applause and no, no reaction, basically. I thought this was brilliant. I was like, what? This is all right, this is natural. You're meant to be selling yourself. <laughs> the thing is, though, when you go back, though, right, I know when I'm going to go back, if there's ever any silence in the audience, that's all I'm going to say. What, the Wi-Fi's dropped? No, I was, no, I was oh. going to say... I'm, <laughs> No, I'm just going to go, listen, I'm used to a whole year of no applause, right? This yeah. is this is nothing to me, you know what I mean? Yeah, it might have actually built our confidence up. Possibly, yeah. Because yeah. we won't rely on it anymore. You won't rely on the validation of the crowd. True, yeah. Do you know that? It's actually a really good point. I never thought of it that way. Like, I mean, fingers crossed that's what happens. Yeah. <laughs> in in theory, that's what's going to happen. In practice, you're going to tell, like, if that does happen, you're going to go, oh, Please shit. Please like me. Just like me. <laughs> Even if you're laughing at me and not with me, just laugh. Just fucking laugh, you bastard. (laughs) Now, you've been up to Edinburgh, haven't you? Yeah. Um, How was that? Because I've I've never done it and I'm thinking of doing it. Um, Did you do the whole run up there? Yeah. So I've been up there three times now. Um, The last year I was meant to do my hour, but obviously that one didn't happen. So the year before that, I did a 45 minute Mm. um, where you're on your own. And that was really hard. (laughs) Um, not for the actual 45 minutes you're on stage, but because all the money you've invested is your own. Yeah. And if you're not getting a crowd in, you're ju- you just can see your bank account just going down and down. It's quite hard to take. I bet it might be, not, not, I don't want to use the word soul destroying, but I bet it, like you said, it must be hard, obviously, seeing the money going like that. And, you, and if you're not seeing the, the ticket sales go up. up. Yeah. And it was a full month of very small crowds. Yeah. Um, so that was tough. And then, so I was sort of emotionally broken. And then a week sort of before the end of the fringe, 
I um, fell and broke my foot as no. well. So I was physically and emotionally and mentally broken at you, the end of that month. You were, you were broke in all, in all levels, basically. And, and yeah, financially broke. <laughs> um, but the year before, I did a split show, and that was lovely. And I was 100% mm. recommend acts go up and do that. Yeah. Because it is like a, it's like a boot camp for comedy. Totally. Like, yeah, that's the way I describe it, is boot camp for comedy. I think you're spot on. Like, I know if I ever done a show, it probably would be a split with someone. Yeah, um, and you do- can't go up there and not get better. If you're doing it once a day for half an hour on stage for a month, you're going to come back a better act. So yeah. you can't really lose. And also because you're splitting all the costs. And if you can get on free fringe, you're laughing. Yeah, and that's, the thing, if you, that, that's just it. I suppose if you're splitting the costs, you're splitting the pressure as well, aren't yeah. you? Yeah, yeah. And there's two of you flyer in, there's two of you getting the crowds mm. in. There's, there's two, when a person looks at a flyer, they're like, oh, I might not like her, but I might like him. So... And then they might go and see him, but then think, actually, she's really yeah. good. So, so, uh, yeah. yeah, so you're sort of doubling your chances. Now, you, one of your shows was Disney... Now, I've got the name, because I've, I've done my research, that's, right? That's I say I've been on... As people call it research, some people call it stalking. Right? I've done <laughs> I've done both, right? I call it stalking. Okay, <laughs> I didn't. I didn't agree to get in this cab. I've been kidnapped. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> TFL, if you're watching this, ignore that. <laughs> um, where are we? Um... Anyway, it's called Even Disney Needs a Day Off. Right? Now, you're a bit of a Disney fan, aren't you? I love Disney. She yeah. loves a bit of Disney. I'm 34 years old and I love <laughs> Disney. <laughs> Thank God, actually, that might be why I was all right during lockdown, because they started Disney+. Plus. And is that what get you th- got you through, was Disney+. Plus? Yeah. I, I watched all the Marvel films, which I hadn't watched before. Really? Um, yeah, I watched them back to back, like they were a, sort of more like a series than films. What was your favourite? Because I've, I've never done Marvel, never done it. Have you not? Nope, never done it. Oh, uh, Endgame was quite good. Yeah? Yeah, that's near the end. <laughs> <laughs> it's a clue in the title. <laughs> <laughs> but um, I had a bit of a cry to that, I think I needed that. Yeah, that was good. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Disney Plus, uh, my mum, my sister bought that and now there's about five of us on that subscription. Right, well, of course, you, you only get one subscription, don't you? Yeah, no. split it between about seven households. It's like my Spotify account. I think my whole family are on my Spotify account. Oh, I didn't know you could do that. Yeah, I'm sure you can do that on Spotify oh, as well. Okay, I'll do that as well. I don't recommend this, by the way, <laughs> yeah. if anyone's watching this. I you should always pay for all your subscriptions. <laughs> <laughs> no, um, so, no, like you say, you are a Disney fan. Um, have you ever been to Euro Disney or any like um, Florida or anything like that? Yes, I, I haven't been to Euro Disney. I've been to Hong Kong Disney. Um, I've been to uh, Florida twice, and I feel like there might have been another Disney that I've been. There, there is another. I didn't. You know, I didn't even remember there was a Hong Kong Disney. Yeah, it's very small. Right. Um, I didn't go to Hong Kong for. Disney. Disney. Yeah, that's a bit of a push. But that's, that's I made sure when I was in Hong Kong, I went to Disney. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, um, but the Florida one, uh, my friend was going with her boyfriend and um, she invited loads of people and then no one really said yes. So it ended up being just me, her, her sister and her boyfriend. So I was sort of like... <laughs> was that a little bit orcs? <laughs> Not for me. <laughs> I had a lovely time. I bet the boyfriend's kind of gone, what have you done? Well, that was where he um, he proposed to her while we were out there. No way. And he did it on a hot air balloon. But what the weirdest thing was is he'd invited me on that hot air balloon because he said, oh, like I'm going to book a hot air balloon. Do you want to come? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And um, I was like, oh, uh, no, that can be maybe a day for you. Like... Because obviously I've tagged onto your two week holiday. Just have a day to yourselves, guys. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but then they came back and they'd got engaged, and I was like, "But you invited me on that." Like, <laughs> and he said, "Oh yeah, I was just going to put you in a balloon behind, so I was just going to be bobbing along behind them." <laughs> you're just like, doo, 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 yeah. doo, doo. That, I suppose it's a bit of a good cover, though, isn't it? Like if you're going to propose on a hot air balloon, right? You can sort of say, well, "Look, if I bring a friend along, she'll never guess yeah. that I'm going to do it." You know what yeah, I mean? Nice she'll never have any idea. Yeah, not for me. <laughs> <laughs> So, um, what was I going to say? Wait, um, my mind's gone blank now. Yeah, you're a, Dis- um, a Disney fan. Also, I mentioned at the start about packing a punch. Now, you've done a bit of white collar boxing. I have. Well, yes and no, but yes. Yeah, but no, but yeah, but no, but is that what it was? <laughs> yeah, but no, but yeah, but no, but. So I did all the training. Right. Um, so I did ten weeks training. So ten weeks of being punched in the face for practice 
to get in the ring. Nice. Um, and then my fight was meant to be on the 20th, 20th of March, 2020. Oh, no. And we, they started locking things down on the 16th. So it didn't actually happen, um, but I had been sparring for like the, the five weeks before that and training for the 10 weeks before that. Oh, that's, oh mate, that's, I'm gutted for you. So with, with, the, with the white collar boxing, how many rounds do you do? So you do three two minute rounds, which doesn't sound like a lot, but when, when you get in and you're sparring, you realise how difficult boxing is. Like the mm. fitness levels that they have, I, you just can't even imagine. Did you do that purely? Is it purely? Are you a big boxing fan, or you do it like um more like a sort of a fitness thing for you? Uh, or is it a bit of both? Uh, neither of them really. Right. <laughs> so, okay. <laughs> boxing um, keeps you in the present moment. So you know, like mindfulness and stuff. A lot of people do like yoga and stuff. Well, this has gone a bit deep. Keep... This has gone in a level right. that I never thought. <laughs> the happiest you can be is if you're in the present, because if right. you're in the future, you're you're worrying about you get anxiety or whatever. And if you're thinking about hmm. the past, you get depression. So I was like, right, be in the moment. Um, and I chose boxing for that because if you're being punched in the face, you can't really be thinking about the past or the future. You just have to be in that moment. Um, but most people would say you could just do yoga for that. I was going to say, yeah, it's a lot less painful. I should yeah, imagine. but yoga's really boring. I, I'd give you that one, yeah, yoga would bore I find that really boring. And um, also, with uh, I did the boxing because obviously we do comedy. Mm. And I think the most, the most I've performed to is like 900 people okay. in, in one gig. And um, this would have been 2,000. So wow. I thought if you can hold yourself and, and fight and hold your technique in front of 2,000 people and being punched in the face, then you can do comedy in front of however many. Oh, totally. So it was almost just like a confidence boost for me. That's, that's what I wanted to use it as. Just yeah. like, well, you know you can do that, so you can do that. Yeah. So if anyone was listening, thinking, what the hell was that noise going past? It was a car going past at 100 mile an hour. Sorry yeah, about... they do speed down this road. Do they? Yeah. Jesus. Yeah, but no, honest, right, back to sorry, back to the subject, because I find it really interesting. So that, you know, that's a real deep way of thinking about it. I never thought of it that way. Obviously, I've, I like boxing. Right, and I've and I wanted to get fit, and I looked at a way at things like man versus fat, you know, the, the football thing, yeah. and the white collar boxing really, really appealed to me. And so when I see you done it, like obviously, I'm gutted you didn't fight. I'm gutted I didn't I'm fight. Absolutely because, gutted you didn't fight. Yeah, they have moved it, but you know when you think, but I did the ten weeks training, and that's like two and a half months of your life where you're, like you said, you've got to be so fit. You're mm. running. I was, I think I was working out like seven days a week. Wow. And you're running, you're training, you're doing strength classes, you're sparring, you, you have to change your diet. Like, it, 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 be, it depends. Some people just go, oh, I'll sign up for it and just turn up. But I'm not like that. I need to know that I've done the work yeah. so that I get a level of confidence. So I just don't think I could put myself through another 10 weeks of it. Oh, that's, that's such a shame. Because I was about to ask, if you do fight again, where was it going to be? But if you're not going to do it... That's it was a... going to be at the Troxy in London. Yep, yeah, I know. Yeah, yeah. yeah so... Well, I've got got... One, well, I'll ask you one more question about it then. Could you have done her? Yeah. You'd have, you'd have took her, I'm not going to say no, you'd, yeah. You'd have smashed her face in, yeah. wouldn't you? You'd well, have... the thing is, my coaches started putting me in with blokes... So I was sparring with blokes because they're <laughs> <laughs> she's knocking their, about their geezers. There we go. We just don't... That if I was if I could hold myself against them, then getting in the ring with another girl is going to be a piece of piss. I can see the logic to it. Yeah, no, I can see the but, logic. But um, I don't know if I like. I don't know if I needed to do that. <laughs> <laughs> there was one point. This is gross, actually. I go on. This, um, I was sparring and this bloke punched me in the nose. And uh, this sort of stuff went across my face and I thought, oh, how embarrassing, like, I've snotted on my own uh, face, but you just keep going. And then the round stopped and they're like, you all right? And I was like, yeah, yeah, I'm fine. And they're like, come here, we'll clean you up. And I was like, what do you mean? And there was all blood all over my face. Oh, it, shit. Yeah, it caught so, my nose and it had just gone all over my... But I was just, like, embarrassed if I would just keep going and you <laughs> made a mess in your own face. You're so <laughs> like, just don't show fear, don't show fear, just keep going and there's claret all over your face. Exactly. Do you know what, right? I, like, fair play, because I, I don't... I mean this in the nicest possible way, like... If I was sparring against a girl, I don't know if I could punch a woman in the face, if that makes sense. Yeah, no, he did. I don't know, but I, I, fucking, he's hardcore, that guy. <laughs> <laughs> you must have really pissed him off or something like that. Well, I'd actually been on a date with that bloke, so maybe I had pissed him well, off. Well, that just says it all, really, doesn't it? Yeah, no. You didn't answer my text, bang. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you didn't call me back. Like, 
Yeah, so basically you got in the ring with this guy um, that you once dated. That's ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, that was... I am. I think I'm a bit of an odd character, actually, no. now that you're pointing it out. <laughs> no, I find it, mate, I find it fascinating. Now, you, you've also got a podcast. I did not know this, right? Because I'd have listened to it. Well, well, tell us about your podcast. Oh, bless you. Um, yeah, it's called Free Girls One Pod. Uh, <laughs> Where'd you get the inspiration for that? Well, here's the thing. Was it the I same didn't... place I got the inspiration for this? Oh, um, I didn't <laughs> get the inspiration because there were three girls and um, one stopped doing it. Okay. So I'm sort of like the replacement. I'm sort of like, uh, was it Natasha? Oh, no, Jenny and Atomic Kitten. You know, one went out and another oh, that's one right. came yeah, yeah, yeah. in and replaced Kerry. Yeah, yeah. I'm the girl that comes in. You're the sub. I'm the sub, yeah. Um, but super sub, that's what you are. Thank you. Super but, sub. But we've done about five episodes. It's sort of, the way I describe it is girls chatting after a glass of wine without the wine. No, no, yeah, yeah, yeah. I can see what you're saying. Yeah, it's, it's quite a loose, quite relaxed chat. Yeah. Um, no, that sounds great. And is it, is it, does it focus mainly on sort of any topic, or is it kind of more sort of? I'm guessing girly. It's more sort of girly topic based. Well, so we pick a topic each week. It does get quite deep though. So like last week we chose money, um, but then another week we were talking about first traps. Do you know what first traps are? No, I don't really. I've heard that. I've heard of it. Go on, explain. I still to don't really know. It's like where you'd be like sexy on the internet, but you pretend you're not being sexy. Oh. And it's so that like men Ooh. will slide in your to your DMs. I've never had that one. Might have. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if anyone has thirst trapped me. Um, oh, have you ever thirst trapped someone? No. I, I might have tried, but no one, no one <laughs> bit. <laughs> You give it your best shot and it just was yeah. like, nah. No, so really I just say, no, I've never thirst trapped. <laughs> <laughs> I've never heard of that. I've never heard of thirst trap. Yeah, ever. it's a big thing. But then, so I thought it was meant to be sort of subtle. And then when I Google, like I put in um, Instagram thirst traps in like the tags. Okay. And it brought up some thirst trap accounts. And wow. uh, they're not all doing it subtly. Really? Yeah, one had a bum hole out. It was a bit much. <laughs> And I found that out after we'd recorded the podcast. So I was like, oh, I sort of need to clear up that. Hold on. That's hold on a minute. Right. Someone's going to be subtly... Yeah. Subtly, the word subtle, right? Well, that's what I thought. Subtly trying to... What's the word? Um, chat someone up. What's the subtlest way you can do? I'll get me arse out. Honestly... Please tag the the first trap account at the bottom of this video so people know that I'm not making this shit up. I am. It, it I, was when this very goes, graphic. When this goes on, you and anyone on YouTube, look up thirst trap, right? Yeah. Thirst trap accounts. I'm telling you. Um, what's the pod? What's you say? The podcast was called Three Girls One Pod. Three Girls One Pod. Where would where would be able to find that? And all. Um, all yeah, Spotify, Apple Podcasts, um, place. Yeah. Do you know where to look? Three Girls One Pod. One pod. I'll start one that again. Pud. One pod. Three girls, one pod. Check it out on Spotify, definitely. <laughs> Fiona, that was brilliant. I'll, do you know what? I really enjoyed that chat. Um, now, are you up for playing a bit of a game? Yes. Yes, right. Now, this, is my, this is the game. We all know the game by now, but I'll introduce it to you. It is How Much Is That Celebrity on Cameo? I have three celebrities. I'll give you, the, I'll give you their names. The amounts that they're going to cost, and you just give me the answer. Okay. Cool. All right. Got your paperwork here. Very technical. All right. Okay. So the f we spoke about boxing earlier, right? Okay. So uh, I'm going to give you a boxer. Okay. We've got Chris Eubank Jr. Right. Right. Here are your options. Is Chris Eubank Jr. on cameo? Seventy-three pounds seventy-five. £83.75 or £93.75 for Chris Eubank on Cameo. Right. They're quite specific amounts, aren't they? Is They've, it like the you're tax learning, off or something? What's that? They're well specific, really specific. Right, Chris Eubank Jr. Well, boxing's quite a well-paid sport, isn't it? But, no, mm, I'm going to go I'm gonna go with the middle one, B. I'm going to go £83.75. £83.75. The answer is... £93.75, oh. one out. That's Cl what I should have gone for because I said it's quite a well paid sport. Sorry. <laughs> and then just completely, I, I used it and then I went, just discard that logic though, Fiona, and don't use that. <laughs> so, trust your gut. Yeah. Trust your yeah. gut. Right, the next one, we've got Caitlyn Jenner on Cameo. Now, 
are you ready for this, right? This is going to be higher than Chris Eubank Jr. Is Caitlyn Jenner £1,875, £2,875 or £3,875 for a message from Caitlyn Jenner on Cameo? Would you pay that money for Cameo? I, I reckon that's got to be C, isn't it? That's got to be the, the top dog. You reckon it's £3,875? Yeah, she's a Kardashian. The answer is £1,875. You can get cheap as chips. Where are you getting these Where are you getting these uh, figures, facts and figures from? From the Cameo website. Go oh, all oh, right, OK, yeah. I've not just made it up. It's, like, <laughs> <laughs> it's a clue in the title, Fiona. I just don't want to say anything. Oh, no, you've a... been Googling it. You've got the app. No, I went on Google. Just, okay, you just, you just okay. go on Cameo and look it up. Right. I didn't make this up. Right, I'll tell you, the last one, I'm going to give you the option on the last one. In Between Us or Baywatch? Oh, I want to go In Between Us. In Between Us, yeah. right. James Buckley. Yeah. Is it Jay from In Between Us, isn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Will, sorry, James Buckley, is he... Thirty-one pounds twenty-five pence, forty-one pounds twenty-five pence, or fifty-one pounds and twenty-five pence. Right, I'm going to see because I'm sure I heard this that he's making an absolute mint by charging about fifty quid. But people love him, so he's making loads. He's, I, I, yeah, he is doing loads. But see, is that your final answer? Yeah, because I actually heard that somewhere. <laughs> The answer for James Buckley is Trevor. £41.25. Oh. It was B. Piss off. She's is it B? B. You got zero. Nah. Sorry, Fiona. Can we do it again? Can we, can <laughs> we retold it? Cut yeah. this one. We'll do another episode. We'll do another bit. Ah. Oh. I'm sorry, mate. I'll tell you what, then. We'll do this one. This ain't going to count on the leaderboard, but we'll do this one for what? a bit of fun. Well, I don't, I'm not doing it. I'm all right, not we'll do, it. All right, we'll do this one. We'll, I'll give you a bonus one. All okay, right, a bonus okay. one since Come it's on, you. Come on, let me redeem myself. I'll give you a redeemer, right? If you'd have chose Baywatch, yeah. I would have said David Hasselhoff yeah. on Cameo. Is David Hasselhoff £374.25? £374. I'll give you a clue. £374.25, £474.25, or £574.25? I'd like to go for B. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I want A. A. <laughs> The answer is C. No, I'm joking. I'm, I'm, I'm joking. I'm joking. <laughs> the answer is A, £374.25. There Love you go. You Thank redeemed you. yourself. Put that on the leaderboard, please. I'll pop that on the Oh, you can have one. Thank you. You can, you can have one on the leaderboard. Yeah, right, OK. Cheap. Now... We're going to go straight into the final question. Is that okay with yourself? Yeah. Right, and it's a question, as we all know, I love to ask all stand-up comedians. Tell me about your worst or craziest gig experience. Fiona. Right, well, I haven't had many terrible gigs, so it was difficult. No. <laughs> wow. It was really easy. <laughs> I really had to spend time just cutting between which one to do. Go on. um, so... Uh, you've seen me perform, but yep. for people that haven't, I am sort of a bit goofy, a bit girly. Um, I did used to talk about Disney quite a bit when I first started. Hmm. So when I was about a year in, um, I'm pretty sure it was a paid gig, which for people that don't know, that means that you, you're meant to do your best stuff. But when you're about a year in, you haven't got a lot of material. So what you've got is what you've got. Um, and I was booked to do an army barracks. Uh, right. Okay. Yeah. Big, Dis big Disney fans here, British yeah. Army. Yeah, and I am not suited to an army barracks because I was like, does anyone like Disney? <laughs> <laughs> I think it's called an army barracks. It's where they're training. So they're the, the sort of, they're like the young blokes, like proper like blokes, like lads, lads, lads. As they go? What? How'd they go again? <laughs> and I was like, hi guys! I just wanted to chat about Disney. And um, the thing is as well, where they're training and they're like these young horny men. Ah, <laughs> right, yeah. They I, hadn't I, seen any women for ages. Wowzers, yet. right. So I was in a corner of this room of like their sort of, like their bar, and they just kept sort of edging closer <laughs> and um, and I had this joke was it almost like a pincer move oh onto it was you? horrible like, it was like, horrible like the flying V out of Mighty Ducks they just be like coming towards you yeah basically. I've got dry mouth so my lip was like this so my lip got stuck there because I was so panicked 
Um, and I, and I, can I was see starting to I can see, as soon as your lip went like that, I can see what the bloke's seeing you. <laughs> yeah, and they still kept coming. It was like, is this not a deterrent? Like, stand back. Um, but I did, uh, and I had this joke. I can't really remember it, but it used to be about... Um, so I'd say, oh, I really wish I was confident and was one of these girls that could dye their hair sort of red or blue or green, but I'd just be worried that it would, like, clash with my clothes. Like, mm. I imagine that's why... Hulk is always like, oh, Hulk collapsed. <laughs> <laughs> right. My friend actually used to say to me, please stop doing that joke. It, I can't look at you when you do it. It's uncomfortable. <laughs> and I'm just doing it in front of like 200 men. And anyway, I had to be escorted out of the premises. Um, Why? Because, because I couldn't. Be, well, they just kept sort of coming on to me. Not because, not because I'm not. I'm not saying I'm stunning. I'm just saying <laughs> that any woman that had been there, they would have been like, "It's a lady, it's hello, a, lady." The, the, um, this is how there was a lot of testosterone filled oh army God. lads, and they'd seen a, a, an attractive girl, and they're like, "Right, we're on this." It was. It was just a booking error. Like, yeah, I should not have been booked for an army barracks. I do not have the material or I just didn't have the persona for an army barracks at that point. Yes, it was, it, it, it happens. I'm sure you, you, you've heard this story. Comedians will get sort of booked for gigs that they should never have been booked for at times. Yeah, yeah. Like, definitely at the time as well, because I was so new that it, like uh, crowd work would have worked there, like a bit of banter with them. But yeah, 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 yeah. At, at that point, I was just like, please, please just love them, my job. <laughs> I'm so scared. But you do that, don't you? When, when you start out, like, you, you, I don't know if you do, I know I've done it. I, I see my... Uh, what's the word? My uh, material is like a comfort blanket. Yeah. It's like my security blanket. It's like oh, just just stick to the, just stick to the material. Don't stick do anything. Stick to the else. script. Don't come off the script. Stick you don't to the know script, what you're doing. Yeah. You're not funny naturally. You've written this stuff for a reason. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, I think it was. I think I was only doing about ten minutes, but it was the longest ten minutes oh, of my life. Mate. It was so... I was sweating. <laughs> I bet in more ways than one. Oh, <laughs> I'm panicking, sweating. Yeah. Jesus Christ, mate. Well, do you know what? That is a, that, I love that story. Genuinely, I love that story. I think it's hilarious. And I have really enjoyed you having you on the, in the cab today. Have you enjoyed yourself? Have you, yeah, us? it's been lovely. It's been lovely to see you. No, yeah, mate, yeah. it's been great. We've not, well, we've not seen each other for ages now, have we? It's got to be, well, at least a year, but probably longer than that. Definitely. So just to remind people, what was your podcast called again? So it's Three Girls, One Pod. Three Girls, One Pod. You can find that on Spotify. Um, Google it. I'm sure you'll be able to find it on the net as well. All of Fiona's socials will be on the um, page at the end, so make sure you Log on to them. Um, Fiona, I'm going to say goodbye. Thanks a lot. Bye, thank you. And thanks a lot. And I'll finish this the way I finish it with everyone. Um, stay safe and be lucky, guys. <laughs>